Hey, hey everybody in Facebook land, this is Erin Matthew with Business Made Simple, and I am super excited today to get to share with you a book review from one of my new favorites. Uh, this is Clockwork by Michael McAllowitz, and he is one of my favorites. So I am totally fangirling on everything that he puts out. Um, in fact, I will buy all of his books and listen to them on Audible first on like, Oh, one and a half, one, one and a quarter speed. And I just buy it and listen to it. And then whenever I get a break, I stop and buy the print book too. And then I'll stop and go through and highlight the things that were important to me so I can remember from the Audible book. So I love um, everything that Mike Michalowicz puts out. And this Clockwork book is super relevant, especially for right now um, in the month of May, which is crazy month. I loved the video that somebody put out that was, it's going to be May, talking about how insane the month of May is with all of, oh, hi, Lisa, I'm so glad you're with us today. But yeah, the month of May just seems to get crazy, right, with all of the summer plants coming on and all of the school kids doing all their 100 million things. And really, we all just want to be outside enjoying the weather. So um, anyway, it's a great time to start thinking about how to clockwork your business. So I highly, highly recommend this book, um, Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. It's one of my favorites. And we are going to go through some of my highlights. Um, some of my favorite parts of the book, the big takeaways that I've had. And if you've read it, I'd love to hear your comments too on what your takeaways are or what you loved. So um, the first thing of how clockwork starts out, oh, let me turn off my cell phone here. So one of the first things that I love about how clockwork starts out is that it starts talking about like the myth of personal productivity and basically saying all these productivity hacks that are out there are crap. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, I love productivity, I want to be more productive. But essentially what he's talking about is how um, your organization needs to be run efficiently. So it's organizational efficiency over personal productivity. And the reason why he talks about that is because if you're focusing on personal productivity, you're still doing everything. You're just trying to cram more stuff into the time that's allotted. And so the whole basis of this book is, is how to set up organizational efficiency in a way so that you can plan and take a four, um, a four week vacation at the end of the book. So that's what his entire plan is, is to try to get your business to run without you, um, which of course resonates with me and all of the process things that I absolutely love. So I'm excited to jump in and talk more about it. Um, one of the other main things that he mentions in the book that I thought was super powerful is um, looking at what he calls 4D time. And so he talks about how in, in the business, each individual person and the business as a whole is doing work that belongs in four different categories. The first one is doing the work. The second one is deciding, so making decisions. The third one is delegating. And the fourth one is designing the business. And so he talks about how um, we need to track our time and, just, and figure out our own personal mix of that 4D and also to figure out what the 4D looks like for the business. And so doing the work, I think, is pretty obvious, you know, when you're um, like Lisa, if you're putting together RFPs for people, um, or if you're like me, you know, you're, you're optimizing CRM for people and developing processes for people. That's the actual doing of the work. And then the deciding and delegating is where it kind of gets a little bit confusing. And so in there, he talks about the difference between deciding and delegating. And I love this because... The difference really is if you have delegated something to someone, then they are responsible for the outcome of that. So you hand off the whole thing and they are responsible for the whole thing. If people, if you delegate something to someone and they keep coming back and asking questions, that's your deciding part. So if they keep coming back and saying, well, what should we do with this? And what should we do with this? And how should we handle this particular situation? That's all time that's spent in deciding and not delegating. So delegating is, Okay, I'm preparing this to pass off to someone else, okay? And then the last part is designing. So this is the time spent working on your business, which is something we hear so often. Um, but what I loved about this was that he talks about the ideal work percentages for the entire company. So he says that for the whole company, so if you're just a one-person company, this should be your percentages where you're at. If you have multiple employees, um, then the average of all your time, if you were to add it up, should come to these you know, roughly these percentages. So he says, you know, the entire company should spend 80% of their time doing the work, 2% deciding, 8% um, delegating, and 10% designing. 
So that's where you're actually figuring out, okay, what new products do we need to make? Um, how do we create more systems? How do we optimize what's already happening? So those are the percentages. So 80, 20, um, 10, or eight and 10. And I love this because um, I think so many times we get stuck in all the doing and that we forget how to delegate effectively or we forget um, to spend time actually designing so that things will run smoothly and we don't have to be stuck in the doing phase forever. Of course, as the business grows, um, you'll wanna move yourself out of the doing phase and move other people into that and your percentage of, of designing time will go up. Um, one of the other things that I love that he said in here is that this is a throttle, it's not a switch, right? So you don't just one day go, you know what, I'm not going to do any of the stuff anymore. I'm going to have all my employees do it all, and I'm going to spend all my time in designing. It just doesn't happen that fast, so it's building over time to make these switches. Um, so it's more of like a throttle where you're slowly leaning in to more design time and backing off from um, the actual doing in the company, which I love. Um, another thing that he talks about in here that is so powerful is he talks about um, the queen bee role. And um, Mike is, is kind of famous for his analogies of things. Um, I love the pumpkin plan. If you haven't read that one, that's another fantastic one where he equates growing a business into growing a giant award-winning pumpkin. <laughs> but in this one, he talks a lot about this queen bee role. And so just briefly with that, with bees, um, you know, you have your queen bee who is in charge or who is the most important one in the hive and her entire job is to lay eggs and without her laying those eggs, the threat or the hive will die and they will not have, you know, more bees to be able to accomplish the things that they need to. So her role of laying eggs is the most important role. And so all of the other bees are in charge of supporting and protecting her role. And I love this because, you know, I think sometimes it's hard to identify what is the most important thing, you know, that our business does. Is it how we communicate with our customers? Is it coming up with new and innovative products all the time? Is it, you know, what is that most important role? And it's not a person, so it's not like a job title. It's maybe it's communication um, with clients. And so that could happen for everyone, but it's trying to protect and serve that one role. So he talks a lot about that. Um, next, his next step in, in designing a business to run itself in clockwork is capturing systems. And I thought this was really cool because um, in here, a lot of people talk about creating systems. And it's true that sometimes you need to create something new, but oftentimes the systems that we have are already there. They're just not written down and you haven't actually formally thought them through to be able to pass them off to someone. But obviously, if you've been running a business, you know, for a while, you've had some form of collecting money, you know, so you have something of a collections process. Is it optimized? Probably not. But you have something that you can start collecting and writing down. Um, if you have been doing business for a while, you have some form of marketing. You may not have written it down yet and really cleaned it up and optimized it, but you have it. So he, he talks about capturing what you have. Um, and you have to have that for effective delegation. I am, you know, always preaching that you have to define before you can delegate. So you have to define a process before you can effectively hand it off to somebody else um, or else they're not going to return what you were looking for. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I loved about this is that he, he mentions that, you know, in these capturing of systems, it doesn't have to be in a particular um, format. So you don't want to have the giant binder from the 90s that, you know, is super outdated and everybody has to flip through and you're always printing it, making notes or whatever. Um, it can be in any method that you want and preferably a combination, right? So um, like for us, we have a giant, essentially like a giant table of contents page. We should do another post on this sometime. But we have a giant table of contents page and um, each one of them topics that's listed on the table of contents is a link that takes you to, maybe it's a video, maybe it's a spreadsheet, maybe it's a Word document or whatever that outlines that process. And so he is a big uh, proponent of that as well, which I love. Um, then he also talks about this delegation process. So of course, whenever you hire someone new and you're delegating new tasks to them, you don't just throw it at them and say, here you go, you know, and expect it to come out perfectly. And so he talks about kind of the throttle of delegation to people whenever you're delegating a new task. So he talks about first you hand off the task, 
then you hand off the decision making for that task. So maybe if the task was um, to update social media, for example, then you'd hand off the decision making for that task. So, well, what should we post today? Um, and so you hand off that piece next. And then the third piece is you hand off the responsibility for the result. Okay. So at that point you hand off, okay, well, let's see, you know, you're now responsible for how many likes this got or how many things that, it, you know, how many retweets or whatever you're responsible for the outcome of that particular post. And then finally you hand over the responsibility for the larger outcome to the company. So then you start to say, okay, you've been running social media now for a year. Let's look and see how it's impacted the company as a whole. So that's his throttle for delegation, which I think is super powerful. Um, next, he talks about job traits and trying to move the right people onto the right seats of the bus, if you've read um, Good to Great. So in there, he talks about um, thinking about what are the vital traits that are needed for each task in, the, or for each task, uh, in your company. So, and he then find the people that have those traits to be able to do that task. So this encourages encourage you to think of people not as like their job title, like this is a marketing person and this is a receptionist, um, but to try to think of them as their best traits. Um, so thinking of them as like, okay, this is, you know, Susan on my team and she is our great communicator. And so anytime we need great communication, we pass those tasks off to Susan. So anyway, kind of fun, um, a different way to think about that. Then he talks about a dashboard um, to help you run your business. And he recommends having really simple dashboards to keep an eye on your business. And he kind of breaks it down into four categories for your dashboards. Um, he talks, he calls it ACDC. So, um, you know, what, what do you need to track on attracting your customers? What do you need to track on converting customers? What do you need to track on delivery of your products? And then what do you need to track on collections? So those are kind of the four areas that he talks about needing a dashboard for. And of course, I am a huge proponent of this too for KPIs um, and looking at reporting. I highly encourage you to get good reporting out of your CRM um, so that you can really look at some of those metrics and decide where to make tweaks. The other thing that I thought was huge on this is in the book is that he's talking about when you want to make adjustments based on the reports that are coming out of your dashboard, that you only tweak one thing at a time. And so sometimes we're like, oh, marketing's not working. And so we go ahead and we create a whole new ad that has a whole new audience and a whole new picture and a whole new, um, you know, it has all new copy in it and we placed it on a totally different platform. <laughs> And really, maybe what we had was really close to being effective. We just needed to tweak one or two things. And so we don't really know if we change everything at once. We don't know what about the change worked or didn't work. And so in there, he talks about just tweaking one piece at a time. It takes a little bit of patience. But if, you are, if you're doing tracking on a regular basis, then it's super helpful so that you can know, okay, I made this tweak and it affected it positively or it affected it negatively, you know, and then you can move it back to where it was before and then try to tweak something else. So that was super cool that he talked about too. Okay, and then the last piece that he talks about is this four-week vacation test. And I love this idea of being able to book a four-week vacation. But he talks about how to book um, this four-week vacation where you commit to not work at all. So not to check your email, not to call your team. In fact, he says in there to give your social media and your email passwords to someone else on your team. Let them reset the password so you don't even know what it is. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy brave, and I love it. Um, but in here he talks about setting out a four-week vacation and then planning for it 18 months out. So you can pick a date 18 months from now and plan to take a whole month off in 18 months and then how to step into it so that you're out of the doing role, out of the delegating role, out of the deciding role, and basically be able to pass everything off to your team in 18 months. So um, anyway, I love this. Um, and I highly recommend, again, anything from Michael Michalowicz, I, am, I love. So get the Audible uh, so that you'll listen to it fast if you're like me. Um, and then get the book too because you'll want to make notes on it. And I am so excited um, to get to share some more of these things with you. So thanks, guys. And if you read the book, comment below and tell me what some of your favorite takeaways were. Or if you haven't read it, you can comment on the little pieces that we talked about today um, and see which one of those resonates with you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>